I want to thank you guys for coming to our, our sixth School of Commerce lesson. It's, uh, it's hard to believe we've already done uh, five of these so far, but we, we keep doing them. And every single time we hear a lot of feedback that um, our customers and store owners have been appreciated them. So we will be continuing to do them. Um, so uh, again, welcome to this presentation. Um, if you've attended one of these before, you're kind of you're gonna, you're gonna know how it's gonna go, but if this is your first one that you've joined, um, the presentation that we're gonna talk about will go about 20 minutes, and then we'll be doing a, a live Q&A Q &A afterwards. Um, today, um, we have a very exciting topic, one that's gonna apply to pretty much every store owner on Shopify, and that's how to beef up your social media strategy and get people to like you. So today we're gonna be talking about social media, something that I'm sure you guys are all familiar with, some of you guys may already be using social media, maybe not. Um, you may be looking for ways to improve it, and we're gonna we're gonna touch on all that today. We know that there's tons of platforms out in social media nowadays. Every you know every store owner is told you have to use social media. It's a huge opportunity. Um, you can create tons of sales, tons of traffic from it, um, and your customers are already there, so you should be there too. Um, well, it's it's easy to say that um, for people coming from the outside, but any store owner knows that time is limited, right? You're spending all your time focusing on your, on your business and it's hard to find spare time to be, to be tweeting, posting on Instagram, posting on Facebook, um, and then doing it right, right? Actually investing money, investing time in, in making quality content and not content that maybe just, you know, um, downloaded online or, or reshared over and over again. So lots of times we have to ask ourselves, what platform should I focus on? Where should I be spending my time? Where um, can I put my time to give me the maximum benefit for my industry, for my business? And we're going to be talking about that a lot, is talking about how to choose the right platform for um, various industries. And if you guys have questions um, about uh, what platforms you should be using for various industries, definitely submit them as questions. And we, we would love to give you suggestions um, on your various uh, industries and, and, and markets and, and what accounts we would suggest signing up for. Um, so we're going to be talking to you about all this kind of stuff, what platforms to use, how best to use them, where to spend your time. And I'm very um, excited and I'm glad that we have um, Mike Trackalo, who's the social media expert at Bold. He actually manages the social media for our accounts. Um, and I'm glad to have him on with us to be chatting about social media. Mike, thanks for joining with us. Hey, Kevin. Uh, thanks for having me. It's really great to be here. So Mike, before we get going, I, I, got a, I got a joke. I went online, I searched for some social media jokes, and I got one that maybe some people will like. Okay. Re I'm, ready I'm, to hear it? Yeah. So why were the breakfast potatoes chasing each other? Why were the breakfast potatoes chasing each other? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Kevin. Why were the breakfast potatoes chasing each other? Hashtag. I'm going to just pause 10 seconds for some laughter. Maybe people were joking at that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started with the, uh, with the presentation. So, um, like, I want to get right down to it. So what, what in your mind are maybe like what, three reasons why somebody would want to use social media or why a store should be on social media? Kevin, I'm, I'm really glad you asked that. And I think it's, it, it's quite clear to me anyways. Um, your customers are already there and they're already talking about you. Um, your customers expect you to be there. Uh, they expect you to be there to answer questions. Uh, and, and social media is also a really excellent way to drive traffic to your store uh, and get your name out there in general. Uh, so I'd have to say that those are probably the, uh, the three main reasons why uh, it's really important as a store owner to be on social media. So, you know, you said driving traffic and that's probably one of the things that a lot of store owners struggle with, um, you know, for, through every phrase of their business. You know, when they're getting going, when they're, when they're growing, traffic is always something that's important. So would you say social media is something that that store should jump on right away as soon as they start their store? Um, or is it something maybe they should focus on later? Um, where do you kind of prioritize social media in terms of, of marketing and, and time spent? Okay, well, that's a really interesting question. And I think it, uh, it can be answered twofold. Uh, number one, uh, if you're not on social media right now, I would say that the time to do it is r right now. Well, maybe not right now, because there's some valuable information that you can probably learn from this. Uh, but an hour from now, later today, um, customers really do expect to see their favorite brands uh, engaging with them on social media. So if you're not on there, uh, it is important for you to uh, to take that plunge uh, and, and jump on board. Now, 
I think one of the most important things that should be kept in mind um, when either creating a social media account or, or choosing what platform to be on uh, is the notion that you really shouldn't be joining every single platform just to get noticed. Uh, if you're having a difficult time understanding which platforms that you should be on, um, there's a, a few things that you should keep in mind. Um, number one, keep in mind what it is you actually want to accomplish from social media. Uh, you know what I mean? If, uh, if you're looking to get more traffic to your site or you're looking to showcase your product or your store, um, you have to keep that in mind uh, when making uh, you know, structured goals and specific, uh, specific measurable uh, objectives that you can have. Um, number two, you got to keep in mind who your audience is uh, because without them, you would just be talking to yourself. Uh, and then three, once you kind of have a good idea of who your audience is, uh, it's important to start thinking of a content strategy because content is, uh, is the fuel that you'll use to engage your fans in your audience. So you said, you know, obviously, again, this is kind of a theme is, is driving traffic. So if we were if we were to narrow down the platforms, regardless of your you know, the demographic of your business, what would you say is the best social media platform for driving traffic to a Shopify store? Dang, uh, that's a really good question, Kevin. Uh, I'd have to say that Facebook uh, Facebook is really great for this, um, and it really does come back down to uh, to knowing your audience. Uh, Facebook allows for really, really powerful uh, targeting options. Um, so you can reach right out to your target audience based on their demographic, their location, their interests, their behaviors. Uh, and, and if you know who these people are, I think Facebook really gives you a, a good opportunity uh, and is, is a good medium to get your content uh, in front of the uh, people that you really do want to reach. And knowing your target audience right off the bat, um, you're going to be able to reach them with the content that you do create. Now this is kind of a side question because we're not get, we're not going to get into paid advertising too much, um, but one thing I want to talk about is obviously you know like a platform like Facebook has has consistently changed over the past you know well since it was in, you know uh, created um, many years ago. Um, is it does it still make sense to like do you, can you still drive traffic with with organic content not paying or on Facebook now are you kind of you kind of have to pay to get to a decent sized audience? Do you have to pay for advertising. I think content plays a, a really big factor in, in, in answering that question. Uh, you know, one, one really uh, good benefit uh, of, of using paid advertisement is, is the opportunity to reach an audience that you might not be targeting already. Um, if you have a very strong target audience and you know exactly who they are, um, if you're developing really great content that's showing the benefits of your product, um, really allowing customers to, to ask questions, um, to know everything that there is to know about your store. Um, there's not as big of a need uh, to pay for those, uh, to, to, to pay for advertising, I guess you could say. Uh, advertising uh, really comes into play when you're either searching for a, a new audience or, or, or kind of trying to reach a, a bigger audience than you do have uh, specifically to your own channel or platform. Hmm. So yeah, audience is clearly super important and you know I think a lot of businesses are always looking for their audience and trying to find out how they can speak directly to them so do you have any do you have any tips or any suggestions on how businesses can find where their audience is and therefore choose a platform to kind of focus on yeah totally um if you're looking to choose what platform uh, you should be on as a store owner, uh, I, I think you can answer that question really simply. And, and the answer to that is you should be on the platform, uh, whichever platform your audience is already on. Um, as a store owner, the question, the question really shouldn't be what platform should I choose? Um, the question you should be asking is uh, what platform are, are my customers already on? Uh, if you don't know that, there's a, there's a few ways that you can do that. Um, I kind of take a two-prong approach to this, one of which you're going to have to be a, a bit of a detective um, and the other side you're going to have to be a bit of an analyst. So um, as a detective, you're going to find, you're going to want to find out where people in your industry are already connecting with your consumers. So, you know, identifying a handful of companies that are already in your space that are active in social media. What are their fans doing? Are they on Snapchat? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Wherever they're engaging the most, I think that's a really great opportunity for you to see if there's room there for you to, uh, to jump in and try and get your content or, or, or your product in there. Um, and if not, it's a really good opportunity for you to maybe try and map out some, uh, some new untouched territory where your customers may be um, that they're not already engaged. I think that the second part comes along with that is, is, is being an analyst. Um, and here's, here's where you're just going to take a look at the hard data. 
Um, there's a lot of really great resources online um, where you can see the specific cups, customer data from each of the platforms out there. Um, so if you know um, the specific demographics and you know the type of customers that are engaging with those platforms, if you have those similar customers, it might be a, a good idea to, uh, to take a look at some of those platforms. Yeah, Mike, and you had sent me this uh, this article over um, before we started this webinar, talking about the different platforms, and I'll include this link when we're you know when we uh, send a follow up email to everyone who attended the webinar. Um, but yeah, this is this is really interesting to see the different breakdown of the various people on social media. So it seems like Facebook's the biggest platform. What what is kind of the second and third biggest platforms? Would you say? Well, I mean, Facebook really has captured the marketplace. Uh, generally, it, it's the most popular uh, platform. Uh, it, it's the best platform to reach millennials uh, and Generation X and, and anybody in that uh, that specific uh, a group of people. You know. I was on Facebook earlier today. Uh, it is part of my job, but even when you know we're not working here, you know you're on Facebook. You're scrolling. You're seeing what's going on in the world. Um, it, it really all just comes down to to where your customers are, Kevin. Uh, we could uh, we could talk all day about which platforms are the best, um, but really at the end of the day, the best platform for you is wherever your customers are. Mm -hmm. well, that makes perfect sense. Um, let's do a little, uh, you know, uh, exercise. I don't, you know, I don't do a ton of personal social media myself, but I do like, I do like Instagram. And there's a, a client of ours actually that uh, uses Instagram. They're called Pure Vita bracelets. They sell these bracelets. And you can subscribe to receive a new one every month. Um, obviously, choosing when you, you know, what platform to go on is, is super important. But then when you choose a platform. Um, setting up your profile correctly and getting started and, and having a, you know, a good representation of your brand is, is equally as important as choosing the right platform. So like when we look at a, you know, a company like Pure Vita Brace, it's like I've got on the screen here, what are some of the things that, you know, that they're doing that make, you know, that are good tips or are things that you see that they're doing that, that other brands should be doing as well? Tim, what I really, really like about this is they've got a ton of user generated content. Uh, I, I think that I can speak on behalf of a lot of store owners or a lot of uh, people on social media in, in general. One of the biggest uh, roadblocks is coming up with fresh content, you know, coming up with what your audience wants to see, uh, you know, taking time to really think about what the benefits are, how is this post or this tweet, how is this going to impact my customer? Um, and when you use user-generated content, you're essentially taking all of that, uh, that excess thought and, and energy out of that. Um, when you have pictures or images or, or resources of customers actually using your product, this is what people won't really, really want to see. It, it's one thing for you to tell customers how to use your product and tell them the best ways, um, but if they're actively posting uh, and embracing your products and your brand in a fun environment, uh, it goes a really, really long way to, to share their content and, and make them part of the conversation. Uh, I know that you know even being retweeted every now and then from a big brand, you get that little bit of excitement. You're like, dang, they, they really heard that and they appreciated that. You know, Who's to say if anybody else saw that? But when users get their content posted on big brands, I know it makes me feel good. So that's uh, that's definitely one uh, one way that you can approach that. No, hundred percent. I I can I can definitely say that I've tweeted WestJet a few times in my life, and every time I got a favorite or response, I'm always like, hey, they're actually they're actually watching this thing. It feels uh, good to know that you're being heard, and I and I think that that's really one thing that's really important um, about social media. Customers just want to know. Um, that you're available to answer their questions and and the more opportunity you give for customers to to, to comment and engage with your brand the better you're gonna be at, as a whole you know what I mean it, it, it's it's direct feedback coming from your customers telling you what they want telling you what they don't like that's the best feedback that you can really get to really defining your products and your brand so let's go back to you know you had mentioned user generated content and that's that's something that I hear all the time, um, the term UGC, um, it's tossed around a lot in e-commerce. Um, and you know, look, looking at this page of Pure Vita, here's an example of a picture that, that was clearly taken from one of their, one of their users. Um, they tagged them in the picture. Um, it's content they didn't have to create. It, look, you know, it looks nice, it's a nice picture. Um, it's easy for a brand that maybe, or easier for a brand that maybe has you know, almost a million followers to, to generate some of this content. For a smaller brand, how would you suggest them generating more content? Like what are some tips that they could implement that would help encourage their, their customers to share more on social media? Sure, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that you can do. 
uh, to encourage customers to either engage more with your brand uh, or, or share that their content. Um, one of which is just asking. You know what I mean? It, it's one thing for you to, to shove a bunch of content in your in your customers' faces. Um, asking customers to uh, to show them using your product uh, and and really enjoying that. You know, offering maybe a maybe a contest uh, or or an opportunity to uh, to maybe try a new one new product or or. Um, you know, anything of value that you can give um, to your customers. Uh, and also at the end of the day, if customers are genuinely enjoying your product, they're going to want to share this. This is that this is one of the great things about social media is that it goes beyond, you know, having a brand and, and having a product and having a store. All, all social media really is, is a friend telling another friend something great. You know, go, you know social media just used to be a, a really great place for, for, you know, you'd have conversations with your friends in a platform. Now it's it's evolved a little bit more where brands are actively trying to get involved in those conversations. We already know that these conversations are already happening. So why not put yourself in the middle of that and start engaging and start actually being in those conversations yourself? No, it's, I mean, it's a great point. And, I, and I've heard it a few times because like if, you, if you're not on social media, your customers are going to be and they're going to talk about you regardless of whether you're there or not, right? So... Um, in a lot of ways, you got to be there, so at least you can you can you can you know, react and promote it and kind of uh, be involved in that way. Um, and yeah, contests is actually I've seen you know like Pure Vita again example. They do contests all the time where they're giving away free stuff for somebody who posts a picture of themselves using the product and and they tag five friends and that that seems to be really popular. And I think if you go online and you search social media contests, you'll find um, tons of different examples of that. But when you Obviously, when you start spending money by giving away free products or investing in advertising, you have to start seeing a return of investment, right? You have to start seeing some return to your business or else you're not sure if that's worth your time. So what are some, you know, it's different for every platform, but what are some metrics that you would, you would look at um, or compare at when you start to spend money and, and encourage social media growth? That's a really great question, and and I think that that conversation is is been debated since the beginning of social media. Uh, it's one thing to have you know a, a ton of likes on a picture or something like that, and and I think I've even faced situations with that um, with with Shopify store owners or, or clients on social media. You know they they see that they're getting likes on a post, but is that correlating into sales? So I mean right off the bat, I like likes. Uh, some people don't like likes. Uh, some people don't like likes because it doesn't really necessarily provide a good ROI. Uh, but in my personal opinion, likes lead to more attention because people naturally gravitate towards things that are popular. So if people are liking your content, it, it means you're doing something well. Um, a really good metric to keep in mind um, would be your click-through rate. Um, that uh, is a really good metric because that means that your target audience or, or anybody who's viewing your content is actually engaging um, with that content. If you have a certain call to action, um, learn more, uh, anything like that, that you ultimately want people to go to your website, um, the click-through rate is gonna be really, really valuable for that. Um, genuinely, any traffic data that you can pull, uh, Google Analytics is really great for that, um, but whatever the percentage of traffic um, that's coming to your website from social media is really, really valuable information. So that's site traffic, um, traffic source and referrals, anything like that, that's going to give you a really good understanding of some of where some of this traffic is coming from. For sure. Yeah. And I, you know, it's funny you mentioned likes because I actually, um, you know, you, you went on Facebook now and they have more than likes. They have you know, the unhappy facing, the crying facing, the broken, all these different reactions. And that was kind of um, a reaction to the fact that a lot of people, you know, share all kinds of, um, you know, emotions on social media. It's not all positive. There's a lot of negatives too. It's kind of a side note. And I think this is, you know, maybe what scares some brands away from getting involved in social media is what are some tips to react to the negative comments like if somebody posts on your Facebook page or on your Instagram account about how bad your product is like what would what would be your first reaction to do to do uh, Mike my first reaction would be to to address the comment right off the bat and maybe try and find out uh, what happened you know a lot of things can happen uh, uh, an order might be late uh, a product might have not arrived uh, as as uh, expected uh, there could have been a, a, a poor experience uh, with a with a food or a taste or, or, or 
anything really. Um, but addressing those issues uh, is is really one thing that uh, that is really awesome about social media. Um, having a, a solid customer care strategy. Um, if you do have an app, have an unhappy customer. Number one, find out what went wrong because for all you know, this could be happening across the board with other customers. Um, so addressing that issue right off the bat would be really great. Um, and that also goes uh, a long way with having customers feel like they're being heard. Uh, it's one thing for, you, for somebody to say that they're upset, but it's another thing to have their needs taken care of. Um, and if there's an opportunity to make the situation better, uh, go for it. You know, Social media and customer care is a really great opportunity to turn any angry customer into a brand advocate uh and i think that that will go a really long way yeah i remember i remember reading somewhere that uh it was a stat that said like uh angry customers are nine times more likely to like review you or reach out to you than positive customers are so i think that that says a lot about the the passion behind negative customers and how you can turn them around to be a promoter and uh and you know turn a bad experience into a good one so um one thing I wanted to talk about was strategy because you, you you know you, you briefly mentioned you know when you have a you know strategy or a plan of action and I think it's it's so easy to sign up for social media accounts that a lot of businesses maybe just sign up you know log in maybe add their URL uh, add some pictures and then maybe don't revisit it for a few months um, so before you get going obviously a strategy is very important to kind of focus and actually keep that, that focus on, on driving results and, and making sure that you're spending the appropriate amount of time focusing on the areas that are going to give you the most benefit. Um, so like, what, what, are your, what are your advice when, you're, when we're talking to a business on building a social media strategy? On maybe, maybe they aren't having success with social media and they need to reevaluate. Where would you get started in regards to a, to a strategy, Mike? Uh, Kevin, this has helped me out for as long as I can remember, and, and I've been, uh, well, I guess you can consider a, a professional internet marketer, uh, social media strategist for the, uh, the latter half of a decade. Um, and regardless of the brand, uh, the business, the industry, the product, when it comes to social media uh, and social media strategy, you really need to structure this around uh, what I call smart uh, goals and uh, you know by no means did I create this I think this is uh, something that's commonly found on the internet um, but if you break it down S M A R T you get specific measurable attainable realistic and time-bound goals uh, and what I mean by that Kevin it's one thing to to post a, a picture or a, a piece of content or try and get some traffic to your website um, but if none of that is measurable and, and none of that is really specific, you're kind of just spinning your wheels and hoping that something happens. Whereas if you go into it already having a plan, I want to increase uh, engagement by 10%. I want to increase traffic by 20% uh, over the next few months. Having a very specific goal in mind is going to allow you to come up with some tactics that can help get you there. Um, these goals have to be uh, attainable. You know, you can't say I want... I want to have a million likes by the end of the month because that's just not a, a realistic uh, a goal. Uh, and then all of these have to be time bound too. You know, you, you can only do something for so long. Uh, once you create these goals and you give them their run through, uh, it's important to revisit that maybe at the end of the month, at the end of the quarter, whenever that may be, uh, and evaluate how that went. What that's going to allow you to do is it's going to set you up for success knowing what worked really well last month. Let's do a little bit more of that. If there's something that didn't work. Is there another way we can do this? Is there another area that we can try to, uh, to attain these goals that we're after? Um, so keeping that in mind uh, prior to, uh, to, to picking a, a platform or, or, or a strategy, keep those smart goals in mind and it's going to go a long way with, uh, with long-term success. No, I mean those are that's a that's a that's a great point. Um, you really can't you know have success if you don't know what success is, right? Um, so I want to we're gonna get into a, a few examples that um, Mike had sent over about about social media accounts that are doing a really good job that he wanted to share and talk about. And before we get into that, I just wanna I wanna remind you guys that if you guys have any questions about social media, I encourage you to submit your questions now so that we won't miss them. Um, Mike knows a lot about social media, and it's a great opportunity to ask him anything that's, that may be on your mind. Uh, so, Mike, you had sent me over something about Burger King. Now, you had sent me over this link um, talking about Burger King and their um, chicken sandwich haters. Do you want to talk a little bit about this and, and, and 
the strategy they had on this campaign. Absolutely. I, I don't know what it is about fast food, Kevin, but it, it seems like fast food chains and fast food restaurants are just killing it in so, on social media right now. Uh, there was, there's been a lot of, uh, not, not talk in the news, I guess you could say, but a lot of, a lot of social media channels are taking more of a, uh, of an aggressive approach dealing with customers. Uh, if you take a look at Wendy's or Taco Bell, um, they're actively responding to customers who are unhappy. Uh, some say in a, in a sassy way, um, but what, what this case of Burger King did here, uh, and this just speaks to, um, where social media is and how social media um, has become such a, a big impact on our lives. Um, I saw this TV, I saw this on TV the other day. So it wasn't even on my computer. Uh, I wasn't even around uh, the internet and I saw a commercial for Burger King um, and it was called The Blindfolded Haters. So what Burger King did here is they actively sought out um, negative feedback from their customers. You mentioned that just moments ago. How do you deal with negative feedback? Um, so Burger King launched a, a chicken sandwich, uh, and what they did to uh, to launch this uh, this new item was they found tweets um, from dissatisfied customers who had their previous chicken sandwich. Um, I wrote some of them down. So some of the tweets that they addressed were, uh, my dad thought that I was the disappointment, then, he, then I gave him your chicken sandwich. Burger King chicken sandwiches are so gross, the chicken cutlets would be better used to stuff my bra. And even the dumpster rejected my disgusting chicken sandwich. So. <laughs> Kevin, this is possibly the worst feedback that you can get. And as a brand, what are you supposed to do? So as I mentioned earlier, what they did was they addressed these issues head on. Um, they found these people who actually wrote these tweets, uh, to my understanding anyways. They blindfolded them and walked them to a restaurant where they then gave them the new chicken sandwich. These same customers and their Twitter handles ate the chicken sandwich, commented on how delicious it was, and then when they took off their blindfold and saw they were in a Burger King with an employee holding their negative tweet, immediately their minds were changed. And it really just goes to show how valuable um, social media can be to either addressing a, a, a negative product, a negative comment, um, but really using uh, that social aspect of, of Facebook and Twitter um, and incorporating that into your everyday marketing. That's, that's absolutely hilarious. It reminds me of uh, Jimmy Kimmel has his mean tweets with celebrities. Yes. Seems yes. like the same kind of idea. And obviously, you know, that's, you know, Burger King's a, a, a massive, um, you know, nationwide brand. But I think there's, you know, there's an idea there that some brands may be able to implement on a, on a smaller scale. Um, but it's hilarious. It's it's totally epitomizes the idea of taking negative customers, converting them to positive ones, and just being super upfront about it. Really, and and on a, on a smaller scale, when when you have a negative customer, uh, I think that they're they're just either searching out for information that they maybe don't even know exists. You know, um, finding out what the issue is and, and addressing your customer head on. Uh, maybe they were just looking for more information that they didn't know about. And if you're able to talk to them, have an actual conversation, and then direct them to um, some information they're looking for, or maybe shine light on, uh, on a benefit of your, of your product or service that they didn't know about, um, for all you know, you're going to turn that angry customer into a, into a happy customer, and a happy customer often results in recurring business. That's a great point. Um, so you, also, you also had sent over... Um, Oreo's Twitter account, which caught my eye because I am a huge uh, fan of Oreos. I mean, who isn't? Um, so, what do you think? What do you think Oreo does well um, about their their social media? One thing I think Oreo does really well is they're very timely and very topical. Uh, I think that the term culture jacking or news jacking floats around the internet a little bit, and that's the idea of capitalizing on on a major event that's just happened. Whether that's the Super Bowl, um, maybe something happened uh, that's that's trending right now uh, online that you can capitalize on, um, but really putting your brand in everyday uh, in the everyday media and what's going on, um, capitalizing on that, being very timely and very topical. Um, and, and just really providing some good content for every situation or every scenario um, that people are talking about. No, that, that's, that's a good point. I can't remember the example that they used before, but yeah, I've, I've seen Oreo do a lot of that kind of stuff where they, you know, they're always monitoring like Pi Day and posting about Oreo Pi on Pi Day and all that kind of stuff, being very um, aware of what's going on around the world and, and kind of uh, relating their content to that. 
people are already going to be having those conversations with their their friends and family. So the sooner you can insert yourself into the conversation, um, the sooner it is that people will think of your brand whenever they uh, you know they they have an issue or something that they're looking to solve. That's, that's totally true. Top of mind, Kevin. Top of mind. Top of mind. Um, so the last one you sent me over was Starbucks, and I mean huge brand. You sent me over their Facebook page. And it's funny, actually, you know, I'm looking at their visitor posts and half of them are negative talking about waiting in line for their drink and stuff. So um, big brands face the, uh, the negative issues just as much as small brands do. What, um, what about Starbucks um, did you want to touch on? I think Starbucks really has good content for every season. Uh, and, you know, you can kind of replicate some of those, uh, the similar strategy that Starbucks may have um, on your own Facebook page. Um, you know, changing your cover photo as the seasons change. Um, if there's a new holiday coming up, uh, or or if there's a, a, a situation where you have a, a sale, you know, updating uh, updating your cover photo or your content is a really great way to to keep uh, to keep customers involved and uh, and keep your brand top of mind. Um, I know that every time you know it's Christmas or or anything like that that that, that Starbucks is right on there. Um, they change their filters. They really capitalize on the seasons changing, and they really provide something good for for you know every every situation that you would have a conversation with your friends and family with. It seems like Starbucks is creating that content, but you know big brands, big opportunities. No, that's true. Um, so Mike, that, that that wraps up you know kind of the topics I wanted to chat about today. But is there any any last minute things that you'd wanted to touch on? Is there any tips or any sort of um, just bits of advice you'd want to share to our audience? Um, yeah, you know what, Kevin? I, I think that if you are new to social media or you haven't quite got um, the look or the feel or the sound that you're, that you're after, um, it just really comes down to, to being yourself and being genuine. Um, people can uh, people can spot that from miles away if, if you're not being genuine and you're not being true to your brand. Um, so don't be afraid to be yourself and have fun. Uh, people are going to do business with people that they enjoy doing business with. Um, so if you're yourself and you're having a good time and you're providing valuable information to your customers, um, I think that's going to go a really, really long way. Um, also, don't be afraid to have fun. I think that that's one thing that uh, that social media is really great for. Um, it's one thing to uh, to promote your product, to promote your brand, to promote what's going on. Um, but people go to social media to kick back and have a good time. They want to be entertained, uh, and they don't necessarily just want to be sold to. So one thing to keep in mind that's really important is don't constantly sell, sell, sell to your audience and asking them to buy your product and asking them to check this out. Um, the most effective thing about social media is that it gives you an opportunity to solve people's problems, to answer their questions, and to really put yourself um, in their environment so that way you can help them out with their everyday lives. And if they do have an issue that you can probably solve, you know, you'll be the first one that they'll think about. Um, that user, user generated content is something that's really, really valuable. Um, anytime you have an opportunity to leverage positive reviews or positive customer feedback, um, that really, really goes a long way. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, if you follow a couple of those tips, um, you're going to be set up for some uh, serious uh, social media success. That's awesome, Mike. Um, so uh, we've got two kind of cool things, uh, things for you store owners who are watching today. First off, I want to let you guys know, of course, as Bold, we're on social media. Uh, on the screen right now, you'll be able to see this is our Twitter profile. It's at Bold underscore commerce. Um, if any of you guys out there are actively running stores, um, please tweet us. Um, tell us what your store is about. We will definitely retweet and share you. Um, one of the benefits of being a, a, actually the largest Shopify developer is we have a very uh, large audience that we'd love to promote your stores, um, especially if you use any of our products um, and you tell us how you use them. Um, please reach out. We would love to give you some, some free traffic from our uh, audience. Um, the second thing is, um, we actually make a um, free app. I'm going to pull it up for you right now if you guys are unaware. Um, it's called Social Autopilot. Um, so like I mentioned, this app is completely free. You can download it in your store. Um, it allows you to auto-tweet and post new products. So if you enable this in your store and you add some new products, it will automatically tweet those products out on Facebook and on Twitter um, with full, rich uh, media, and they'll be nicely laid out. And it's one less thing for you to have to worry about um, when you are growing your store and adding new products. So 
Um, I encourage you guys to, like I said, contact us on social media so we can share you, as well as um, download Social Autopilot 100% um, for free um, if, you, uh, if you want to uh, boost your uh, social media accounts. Um, so I, I don't know if it was my, 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 my lame joke to kick off this webinar um, or if we just did a really good job talking about social media today, Mike, but we don't have any questions. I think it's one of the first times we haven't had any questions after a webinar. Well, I'm going to chalk that up as a win that we explained everything that there is to know for how to succeed on Shopify using your social media channels. Yeah, I'm going to take it the same way. Um, so. I want to thank you guys for attending this webinar and registering for this one. Um, we're going to be including a uh, recording that will be sent to all you guys afterwards um, in case for some reason you had to leave or the internet connection got spotty. So keep an eye out for that um, early next week so that you can re-watch it if, you, uh, if you'd like to. Um, also I want to let you guys know that again this School of Commerce series is a, is a regular occurring event. Um, in, in two weeks from today, we're going to be talking uh, with a company called Nosto about how to personalize your store for your brand. So how you can make minor changes on your store to better sell to specific customers that you're going for. So um, it's a great opportunity for you guys to learn about how to customize your store and, uh, and make some more sales. So again, thank you for joining. I hope you guys got something out of this presentation and I look forward to seeing you again in two weeks. Have a great weekend.